Alright, hey guys, welcome back to the Solar System series known as uh, the Pyramid's Path, where we do our generational tarot card reading. So, as you can see, the Selenite selected Sag, so let's get into it. Let's get these cards into the realm of all possibilities, the realm of all probabilities, and we can actually get a full spectrum view on what's to come for mostly Sagittarius Ascendants, but I'll also, um, I'll also recommend that this is quite useful for Sagittarius suns as well as Sagittarius moons because at the end of the day that's this is still the experience that you'll be seeing this is still the experience that you may be reflecting on and actually attracting for yourself and this may actually be you know useful to sort of encapsulate the entire view of what your pyramids path necessarily is because at the end of the day uh, a triangle is three points, and your sun, moon, and ascendant are also three points. So, just because it has, it's mostly focused on the space that you're encapsulated in, doesn't mean that how you're looking at things as well as how you're reflecting on things isn't important too. So now that we got these cards in the realm of all possibilities, the realm of all probabilities, let's see what we actually can lay out for ourselves. Let's make sure it's actually in frame. You know, you guys gonna be mad about that if it's not. But yeah. So this first layer deck that I sort of uh, stacked right here, you can look at this as sort of the vibrational section. So you can look at it as the feelings that basically um, define chapters in your life, right? So the right side is your past, the left side is your is your future, and then these middle three cards are your present, where you may actually be staying right now in the present. So with that being said, let's move on up a little bit. So now that you see that we have these four cards sort of stack, this four layer. If you know anything about dimensions and sort of what those layers of experience represent, you can kind of understand that you can kind of understand that these cards are, um, whatchamacallit, they're ba sort of based off that and you can fi basically find the realm of experience that these cards are representing. So this is representing the thought realm, right? So once you've actually gone, you've, you know, you've experienced the past, you've gone through an experience, you have a point of reference based off that feeling, right? So when you move up and combine that, you basically get a thought on the subject, a takeaway. You add another plank, another piece to your worship, your worship, your sense of conviction and understanding of your moral, you know, your moral definitions, your ethics. And uh, basically, um, you know what you'll do in a certain situation if that time ever comes, right? Now, as we move on up a little bit, we get to the, the triple stack, basically our third dimensional um, breakdown of it, what this pyramid has basically come to, the point it's come to, right? You can see these three individual pyramids sort of leading to this point, right? And then you get this other pyramid that stacks on top of it that you can sort of imagine as, um, you know, the quote unquote, all seeing eye of your own experience, your own pyramid, right? So with that being said, these are basically the main skills that you focus on. This one's a little different, but we'll get into that later. These are the main skills that you actually focus on in, um, in this base off of all these experiences and these takeaways. These are the two pillars of your purpose, the night pillar and the day pillar, and basically the conclusion behind all of this. And um, this is the core vibration at all of your experiences, right? So the actual wheel part of it. So Sagittarius, right? So let's get into it. So your pass card. The pass card, you got Star Brothers. Hi, Horus energy, protection, loyalty, safety, trust, right? So as you can see, this is basically, this is the guiding light. You know, you are the guiding light. You got two freaking, um, two birds being able to soar, fly, see many different perspectives, perspectives. You get the light being a part of the constellation, sort of seeing your constellational body. So you Sagittarius is, you kind of incarnated with, um, that sort of black hole, the center of the Milky, uh, the Milky Way galaxy energy, that sort of holier than thou energy, that holy roller energy. But it wasn't ill taken, you know, because with this, you basically incarnated with like, you know, esoteric information that you can utilize for the betterment of your, you know, your group, your society. Right. And acting like that at a young age, since you have no point of reference, may have led you astray a little bit. But let's see what the second card is before we can start extrapolating all that. And then the next. Well, yeah, this, <laughs> let's break down. You'll see where I'm going. So you got the seas of Mintaka, right? Seeing potential, bringing unconsciousness to light. This is basically what I said this card was going to do. You had this experience where you could see all this, and then you actually started seeing it. So people are kind of like, you know, you're sort of like, well, you know, I'm not acting like this for no reason. You know what I'm saying? 
So this is a very, like, you know, I mean, it's basically, this is basically the action and, like, you know, the post after this, right? You illuminated your light, you saw what was going on, and then basically showed you the sea, right? You actually saw the realm of all possibilities. You saw the collective sea that we're, like, living in, you know? You saw that Piscean realm. And the next card you got is Loosen Your Grip, Coping Mechanisms, Destiny, Addiction, Let God In. So if you remember how I said you were kind of getting holier than thou, and then you actually saw the, you know, the sea, the, the astral sea, the realm of all possibilities and all that stuff going on at a higher level. In a human form, this can get a little confusing because you think you can do all this. You think you're this high being. But if you are this high esoteric being that has all this information, why'd you incarnate on earth, right? And that, um, you know, that fact that's sort of biting you in the ass has, uh, kind of come to a head at this point where it's just like, okay, you think this is your destiny, you're relying on your esoteric abilities, but you incarnated on earth and you're still not really acting on shit. You can just see things from numerous different perspectives, aka mutable fire being adaptable and changeable to different ways of feeling and seeing things, aka when you are, you know, extracting all of that energy from a black hole that attracts all light but doesn't push any out and it basically holds all of it inside of its internal realm, its yin realm. You can get a little confusing and sort of be addicted to that state of being if you see where I'm going in. So this is basically let God in. Now, I don't really take any religious nonsense and concepts and understanding into this. But if we wanted to actually talk about God, God being the universe, a being that's only in conflict with itself, a, it is the space and it is what contain and it is um, what is in what the space is. Uh, what's the word? Not containing. Um, and it is what the space is containing all at the same time, so it is no thing and all the things at the same time in conflict with each other, sort of wrestling, you know, in that expansion-contraction experience of, uh, you know, the universe expands, the universe contracts, so on and so forth, you know, big bang, da 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 da, -da whatever. So this is basically to, well, to not gloss over my point, me, God is basically the realm of all possibilities. That is your true godly state where you live in the realm of all possibilities. You're open to all outcomes, right? So with you sort of thinking you're some type of oracle in some sense, not necessarily, don't get all Greek on me, this is, this is that experience where you're like, okay, if I truly want to live a, um, a life with God, a true open life where I'm not just like focusing on what is to come, I'm not remote viewing everything, I'm not trying to analyze everything from a bunch of different outlooks i'm just experiencing this is that sort of tough experience where life is slapping you around being like oh you want to see this oh you had a wrong prediction uh okay well do this da, 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 da. and it sort of gets you to like okay let me just go through i have these gifts if i want to use them when i want to use them but i'm not always going to do it and now your next experience is earth school life lessons study higher learning so this basically is your card, Sagis, the higher learning. That is the ninth house. This is the, that's the house that the Sagittarius constellation was born out of. Right now, the Sagittarius constellation is more in, it's in, it's, it's more in the 10th house now. So this is why you sort of incarnated with a sense of like status because it, the actual constellation that you got, that um, your house was born out of has moved into the Capricorn house. So that's why you're sort of like, uh, oh, no, 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 I can do this. I've done this before. Now I'm moving on up, you know, why it has that energy in a nutshell. So basically, Earth School is this experience extended. So you can imagine this being like, OK, you did this. You had this. You, you know, life slapping you around a little bit. And now it's like, OK, you accept you're a human, but the lesson hasn't ended. You know what I'm saying here? So this is where you're sort of taking the time to actually put your skills to use forming them it, along with the form that you are in and not sort of pushing that away. You're actually learning how to put two and two together and show that, okay, yes, I am this. I have experienced this constellational body. I'm beaming down into your world. Give me a second. So now let's see what the future holds, right? So the future hold is the courageous peony. If you've seen any of my other readings, you know that I don't really agree with this word peony because it just sounds stupid. I may not be utilizing my best Sagittarius energy here by not actually looking this word up and finding the meaning behind it. But until I do that, I'm rocking with it like my Aries ass will actually point me to do. So basically, without getting too focused on me here, the courageous peony is multifaceted, unique nature. Let yourself be seen. So this is your future, right? So you have basically came in with the with the awareness of being multifaceted, right? 
But until you actually entered the realm of all possibilities in your current form and went through this earth school, you didn't really know how to let yourself be seen. You were letting your skills be seen. You were letting your abilities be seen. You weren't being seen. And that's sort of where that chip on your shoulder came from because um, I personally have a lot of experience seeing this in my life. But um, when someone builds so much of a skill set in a non-physical thing that doesn't benefit them in the same way they think it should be, they sort of get pretentious. They sort of get... um. They sort of get uh, very like, you know, on your ass and being like, see me, see me. I have these great skills. I'm so great. But if you need to emphasize that and you can't just let it speak for itself, then is it really true? You know what I'm saying? So this is kind of, this is, you know, in a nutshell, this is basically most of your life experience focusing on a skill rather than yourself. But then as you move into the future and you combine these two experiences, you will basically get what you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? You know, it should be useful to society instead of just being, a, you know, uh, extracting the influence of the black hole in the center of the Milky Way galaxy, which is what Sagittarius is co-ruled by, and being a holy roller and a higher than thou asshole. You know what I'm saying? So let's let's get to, let's get to these these um takeaways, right? Oh shit! Yo, I love this car. Look at that. That's cool as fuck. You you're never gonna look at solar flares the same way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, so star family, right? You're a part of a team of souls. Call in your support. So, well, I mean, to put it lightly, I'm not going to say your soul family is Sagittarius, but you can call a lot of Sagittariuses your sort of twin flame because that's the mutual vibration that you rock with in a sense. But it's more of a being a Sag and with another Sag, it's like meeting someone from high school 10 years after the fact you graduated, right? It's like, hey, we had a shared experiences, but I, do I actually like you as an individual? I don't know, you know? So this is kind of that, right? So don't necessarily take Sagittar other Sages as your soul group, right? So this is basically you. So if you go through all of your life looking at the um, just like things from your illuminated realm, not the realm of all possibilities necessarily, but you're just like looking at things from mutual perspectives, and then you have to learn at Earth School, learn your single body, your singular point, your singular space, and then be multifaceted at the same time. The best way to go about that is to find mutual people on your vibration, which is why I bring up Sagittarius, other Sagittarius to begin with, because they don't, you may not necessarily jive with them and you know, vibe with them and do all that stuff, but they know how to do the same thing that you know how to do, right? So if you can share ideas, bounce stuff off, eventually you'll find the right host for a certain idea, right? So if you can get a group together and finally find your soul group, you guys can work on all these things that you were focusing on from the jump and spread them out and actually bring them to reality. So all this time learning how to actually, you know, actually um, put your ideas to use, you had to go through this exp these sort of like Saturn slapping you around experiences because at the end of the day, remember, the highest vibration of Saturn is Libra, right? And if you can see from where Sagittarius is and where Libra is, right? Libra is left, but it's 60 degrees left. So it's a sextile. So basically, you had to go through all these experiences learning learning your sextile energy from Sagittarius, right? Not Sagittarius, from Libra, the exalted place of Saturn. Basically, being relatable and getting other people to actually build the structure for you. Because at the end of the day, if you have all these ideas, you have all these experiences, but you're keeping them to yourself and acting like you're holier than thou, of course Saturn's going to slap you around and being like, this isn't the structure of what you incarnated in. So then you had to learn how to do that. You learn how to be multifaceted and then you could take away, okay, let me spread out the love and actually spread out these ideas and put each idea, each individual star so that you could actually bring them to light. Now, okay, so that's not as bad as I originally thought. So the takeaway from these two experiences, the Seas of Mintaka and the Star Brothers is People, you know, probably people in school looked at you like you had some wisdom, right? The whale on the, so because this is the whale on the Orca Elders card, you know, share your song, your frequency, your sound of diving deep. So this is basically like people did see you as the big man on the block that actually had a sense of understanding, right? So you, so people basically believed in the myth you were putting out. Now, don't take myth super wrong way because it's not necessarily a myth. It's just, you know, you were young, you had to figure it out. You didn't have life slapping in the face yet. But you know it's coming after all that I just said. But in the beginning, in like school, people did look at you as wise and like a person they could come to for ideas, perspectives on the subject, right? You can see the whale and it's like little orca buddies and it's just like, I'm the big man on the block. I know what I'm doing. Here, check this out. 
you may not know what you're doing, but you actually had a perspective on the subject, which is why people came to you because they had no understanding, no awareness of what's going on. Now, the next takeaway is what are your garden, right? Nourishment of the body. This is that spa day card where you need to rest, relax, calm the fuck down, and actually just be like, okay, let me take care of myself. I don't want to go, I don't need to, you know, beat, beat a dead horse and look up everything for everybody, right? So, okay, so now that I'm actually looking at this, I sort of take uh, you being a holy roller back, dial it back about 20%, because now I'm starting to see that you guys are actually taking care of more people than I anticipated. So, with this being the combination of the Season Mintaka and the Loosen Your Grip card, you having the awareness of the ocean combined with falling down the waterfall is you were sort of drowning yourself, right? You were drowning yourself in perspective. You were drowning yourself in feelings. You were drowning yourself in the emotion, right, behind what all this was bringing to you. And this can play out as either you were helping people and feeling empathetic or you were being an asshole um, holy roller. So, there's, you know, the flip sides of the coin. So, pardon me for being a little pretentious. But Aries, so... Not exactly a uh, get out of jail free card, but you can understand where my influence is coming from. I'm not an Aries sun, I'm an Aries moon, so this is how I'm reflecting and reacting on the subject. Obviously, I'm not an Aries sun based off the, you know, the quickness of speech, so a little sidetrack about me. So, what should we call it? So, with this being the combination card, this can be, you know, it can play out as one of two ways. You can take this away from you being too helpful or you being too much of a holy roller. But either way, the takeaway is you need to rest. You need to take time in your own garden of Eden. You need to take time in your own young realm to reflect and actually work for you. So you can take um, you know, self-care in any which way you want, but this is basically a self-care card. All right, hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for following this video up until this point. Hopefully it resonates with you, and hopefully you really got something out of it, and maybe even some, uh, some deep insight on how your life has been going, the emotional paths, and you actually have a means to categorize it in a way that truly resonates with you. So thanks for following this. If you guys actually want more and you want to see this full reading, you can click on our Patreon link below. But for now, just take a spin with me, and let's see this... Uh, bigger reading for the entire ecliptic that we have going on ourselves so once again patreon link is in the description if you actually want to see the full reading and you can see the full end of the path all the takeaways and everything that you actually uh enjoyed up into it so far and what it actually concludes to